It is a good old afternoon, y'all. How you guys doing? Just getting my uh, fit aid prepped and ready for the journey this evening. Gonna try and tackle some big bass, man. We are going to be taking out, uh, Devin is gonna be taking out the 120. I'm gonna be on the pedal drive over here. PDL 106. Information about these kayaks is down in the description. You have seen them and you know how much we love them over here. Um, yeah, they're just absolute workhorses. The Autopilot 120 specifically is just next level. I mean, you can really just focus on fishing. You don't have to lift a finger hardly. Spot lock your location with this thing anyways. We're going to take him out on the water, try and catch a giant. We are fishing uh, out in East Texas today with Torrance Pond Boys. We'll link his information down below. Maybe he'll catch another giant like he did in one of our previous videos. So let's go ahead and get lines in the water, see what uh, we can't flip into the yaks. Literally in no hurry, guys. We have been fishing all day, filming a bunch of videos for y'all. Just went out and grabbed some lunch. And I wanted to bring up that Guggen Squad Rods are now available for pre-order. If you haven't pre-ordered one for yourself, go ahead and check them out. You got multiple different models to choose from in the green line as well as the gold line, depending on what you're going to be using it for, reaction for reaction baits. You've got your go-to for all purpose. We'll talk about more in the future, but let me get you started with those two right there. Place your pre-orders right now at a discount with Carl's Club membership. We'll see you over there at Carl's Bait and Tackle. Personally, I think before we break the yaks out, I'm going to go over here in the shade and throw the chatterbait around off the dock. First things first, man. Plenty of time before sunset. Let's drink this drink. Let's chill in the shade and let's cast the chatterbait. Dude, big bass right off the bat. What? Chilling in the shallows? No, dude, that is a big one. <laughs> That's a big one. You're just throwing that worm, right? Yeah, man. I don't know how I'm supposed to get this guy up here, though. For real. Take him over there to the concrete, maybe? Yeah. You might have to. Dude, I hope you do not lose that fish. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, he's in there. He's in there. Dude, keep it tight. Keep it tight. Keep I'm it tight. Sorry, keep sorry. it tight. Ah. Kill him, buddy. You got it. Oh, oh god damn. Here. Oh, yeah, yeah. You alright? Oh. <laughs> oh god. <Nice>. Dang. <laughs> Whoa, Mondo worm. First fish, man. Oh my gosh. Okay, well that took two seconds. <laughs> Not bad at all. Yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Insane. Mm, okay. Are they hitting top water or what? Dude, they keep jumping. All right, y'all, Torrance is on fire. He's already got four fish. Still in the underspin. I'm throwing a chatterbait to start. Devin is getting ready for the water, loading up her kayak. Oh, got him. <laughs> Not far in front of the boat on the chatterbait. All right, first one of the day. That'll do for me, rocking it out on the chatterbait. And he choked it. I haven't had a fish eat a chatterbait like that in uh, some time. There we go. All right, bud. We'll see you. All right, sweet. Mine just felt like weight, like I was coming through grass. What you doing? Where you going? <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> I didn't say much on that one. I just cranked, dude. I don't know, man. I'm getting a subtle bite. It's just getting heavy. I just set the hook thinking maybe I'm just in grass and I'm about to look like a goofball eating it on the run. That's a step up too. Look at man. They are munching the chatterbait. I mean, it is gone. Feels good to get on a chatterbait bite. Haven't had one of those in a while. Getting a little bit bigger over here. Look at that sucker. He's got a little bit of length. All right, and I was casting right on the grass edge with that one. That was a pretty intentional one. I've been kind of fan casting out deep. That one, a little bit different. Let's get you back, son. Definitely cool with some more chatterbait hits. Nothing to complain about. Dude, this place is grassy. So here's how I can explain the bite, guys. It's almost like the grass is so close to the surface, I'm just trying to reel the entire time, staying right above it. And essentially, if I feel the blade stop, I set the hook. Because I don't know if that's grass or a bass. The bite has been subtle. They've just been like munching it, and it feels like I'm going through some heavy weight. So anytime I stop feeling that blade moving, I'm just setting the hook because there's probably a fish on. Yep. There we go. That's three in just minutes, man, on the chatterbait. Oh, yep, yes, I'm telling you, dude, it's hard to tell if you're in grass or you got a bass. Absolutely killing it. Color match blade. You guys can grab this guy over at Carl's Bait and Tackle. This is the heavier weight. I prefer the heavier weights because I can fish them a little bit faster and still get a little bit more depth if I choose by uh, bringing it in with the slower retrieve. And I think this is a 4.3 inch saucy swimmer. I don't think this is that 3.8. Let's go ahead and get little guy back in the water though. 
We're looking for uh, your bigger brother, though. And this has been Chatterbait Tips with Weston Smith. Cast and retrieve. In the trees. Oh boy. I am missing primo bites in these areas, I think. There we go. All right. Have I caught up to you, Torrance? <laughs> Torrance had four before I even got on the water. <laughs> now, now it's four, four. <laughs> Natural chatter bait, throwing it in all the right places. That was a good cast, just right in between all the logs on the right and that tree on the left. I mean, there's nothing but structure in between there. You know, these bass are cruising through, waiting to ambush little fish that are just hanging out in those trees. So there you go. That sums up catch number four. Casting by the cover, man. You got to, you absolutely got to. <laughs> these fish are gonna gravitate towards essentially just objects in the water. Anything you see in the water, you wanna cast towards that cover, especially in the summertime, they're hanging out in the shade. Ow! Especially, very sharp hook, by the way, with these chatterbaits. Carl's bait and tackle. You wanna cast into the shady areas, if possible, of any structure in the water. So, uh, yeah, just, if you see a tree, cast at it. If you see grass, cast at it. You see a rock, cast at it. Give that a break for a second. See what else we got out here. <sighs> got a bit of a worm. Let's see what's up with this. I'll honestly probably just swim this ribbon tail worm. Moving his been What's got him? Yep. Yep. First cast. Come on, bud. First cast on the worm. All right. Yes, please. Let's sorry. Got your first cast with the worm. <laughs> That's a good one, boys. That's a good one. All right, well, we switched things up because the chatterbait wasn't hitting no more. And I think we're in the lead now, baby. <laughs> That's five. I got five on it. All right, then we'll see you later, bud. <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. I got a backlash and so my worm was just sitting. And whenever I go to reel it in, it feels like I'm in grass. Let alone. It's this fine young chap. I have a feeling. Let's see what we're working with. I'm letting you go. Go ahead. There we go. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, take the drag. Take the drag. All right. Gotcha. There we go. What was that next cast after I just re-rigged? All right, fish number two in the boat for me. Switched things up, was throwing that chatterbait for a few casts. Uh, went ahead and re-rigged, tied on a few things. I believe this is the 10 inch. I had it still tied on from uh, fishing out one of the ponds earlier. So I figured I'd throw it around and uh, it seems to be what these guys are wanting to munch on. They like black and red here apparently because we've used those worms before and we've gotten away with black and red crankbaits before. So let's go ahead, let this little chap free. There we go. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Get your butt in here. Get your butt in here. How you looking? Oh, you're not half bad. Probably potentially the biggest. Oh. There we go. Fish number three in a matter of like five minutes. My only thing is I don't have any more of these worms on my boat. They're all on Weston's. These guys are absolute fighters. Let's see, all of these guys have been feisty. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it, but I'm gonna say it. It's all about that ribbon tail. <sighs> Maybe he'll come back. On the fall, I was looking at my watch and completely missed that guy. I gotta get this worm to last me. I'm gonna start cutting him down here in a few. 
Oh, he got it on the swim. <laughs> I was swimming it in, just about to move. Fish number four. Oh, that was too funny. I was just getting ready to move. Had cast it a few more times, hadn't gotten a bite. I'm like, all right, I must have cleared it out. Let's go ahead and move. Little did I know this dude was gonna go munching as soon as I started swimming it fast. Number four for me. We're just working straight braid through all this grass right here. They smoke this thing on the run, it's funny. Some people might just pop these along the bottom, those ribbon tails, you can skrrr, swim them right through the grass. They will get blasted. I'm effectively weedless because I've got this thing Texas rigged. Uh, I just say that and I still caught grass, but <laughs> you can work through a lot of this grass and not get caught. This is gonna be one of the best options. Another good one might be like a, uh, a swim jig, but this curly tail and this color, they just really like it. I've got a lot of bluegill swim jigs I'd feel very comfortable throwing right now but maybe they've shifted to something like a worm's profile because uh, they kind of stopped hitting the chatterbait. So a swim jig would be very similar, only not even thump as much water. So I'm thinking this worm's gonna get smacked again here in a minute. Five and five, Torrance said, we're tied up. What is going on over here? I know, dang, Torrance back in the lead. You might've found the school. Six to five. Oh no, came off as soon as I said it. He took my tail. Oh no, it's still good. Wow, that was close. I don't know how big or small that one was. Set the hook, he going. All right, eight to five. Torrance is way up now. Hey, you have more of the extra worm? Uh, I got one more, yeah. Okay, I'll be right there. Doink. This is the last one? Yeah. You went through all of them? Yes. Get out from the tree. <laughs> Get out from the tree. As soon as it hit the water. Yeah, you tried to go in the grass. I see, little dude. I think that's number five. Look, there's Weston. Hi, Weston. Hi, bud. There's so many geese. This is insane. It's so far away. Torrance is over there in the freaking middle of all of it. Oh, we actually got one. I was gonna say, he's pretty light. <laughs> got one working our way over to Devon. Seems like they'll hit the bottom baits and the moving baits today, which is a good thing. They're just hungry. Let's get them back in the water. There we go. There we go. Got him. Right off the little tree out here. Chatter bait. All right. That's number seven for me. Came right off the twig, sticking up right there. Appreciate you. Uh, I got more in the Carl's order. Oh, oh, just got one. I think this one might be good. Not sure. Uh, nope. All right. He actually smacked it though. Most of them haven't done that. Oh geez, oh geez, oh geez. <laughs> Calm it down. Great, there goes my saucy swimmer. I was just about to say that thing's been holding up so well. <laughs> say bye to that trailer. All right, that's number eight for me guys. Yeah, man, this chatterbait, there's a reason why it costs a lot. Uh, for one, just the attention to detail, color matched everything, stout hook, but this uh, double bait keeper is what really gets my attention. Even though it's something small, the uh, standard chatterbait by these guys just has the one hook keeper, and you will find yourself uh, losing a lot of plastics on these hook sets. Your plastic is just going to come off that uh, come off that hook a little bit but that double hook keeper really keeps these saucy swimmers on there nice. Little perk when you pay the extra for these jackhammers. Head shape's a little bit different with the eyes on there. Blade starts fluttering right away. I definitely think the originals are the way to go for the price, but if you happen to grab a jackhammer, I would say they are a quality, quality bait. Torrance is on again. He's probably up to like 15. He's in the teens for sure. Crazy dude. Catching some fish in today's video. Oh, got one on the chatterbait. There we go. Probably small. Yep, I was gonna say, felt small, that's for sure. I think number eight for me. Actually, that might be number nine. 
I have just about lost count. This one's hardly worth a point, but uh, <laughs> we'll count them. See ya. Gotta stand for a minute, sitting on this kayak all day. Junking out the mission fish for the first time at this pond. I think this one might actually be the heavy hitter. Might get a big's attention with this thing right here. Oh! Oh no! I wasn't ready. Got hits right off the bat. Right on the fall by those twigs. That was like, like right where I was supposed to get a bite. Well, also I like really pushed the hook into the body that time. That was probably more of the problem. Dang, he scrunched the nose up. That was a big one, boys. Another good one eludes the mission fish catch. All right, I'm throwing this till the end. Oh. Oh. Just had another one hit the mission fish. This is getting ridiculous. That one I probably almost had. There we go. There's one on the mission fish. Gotcha. Little bit bigger. Stepping it up, hooked right in the top of the mouth. That's what we want. Come here, bud. Nope, I see ya, I know. I don't think you're getting off that hook. Getting back into a little bit of size with the mission fish. Check that out, man. Line through so they can't use the weight of that bait to leverage that hook out. That is exactly what you want. So if that doesn't make sense, basically this is a line through bait. You put your line through the bait, then you tie the hook on. The point of that is when these fish go to shake their head and this bait is attached to that hook, that weight helps them shake that hook and actually get free from the hook, guys. So this allows when they shake, there's almost no weight on that hook. You see what I'm saying? So it's very tough for them to get away from that hook, utilizing the, the leverage from that soft plastic. So that is why, or one of the reasons why, that fish stayed pinned right there. What a fight, heck yes. That was my third bite now on the mission fish. So I'm connecting one out of three so far tonight. That is not the ratio we're looking for. Let's see if we can get a couple more on that thing before the sun really goes down. Thank you, bud. Oh yeah, that was cool. 316 lures, y'all. Devin and I just picked some of these up. I'll just try and link these down in the description for you guys. Uh, they are dope. They are the world's most advanced weedless swim bait is what they claim. And they do get the job done. They even, now I don't know if this is because we were a first time buyer or what, and we bought a handful. It actually came with some soft plastic glue. So I'm gonna glue him up, but not right at this very moment. I kinda wanna just get back in the water and see about catching some more. You can glue the back so that it's all uh, sealed again and so my hook won't get messed up. Also his left side is starting to open up again from when that last fish bit and his underbelly is kind of starting to open up again so I could really tighten them all back up and make his nose look a little bit better. But let me see if I can get one more bite before I do that because I think that stuff is in the box in the back of the kayak and ain't nobody got time for that. Working it slow seems to be the way to go too. I mean just letting this swim bait fall right down into the grass, tails a fluttering on the way down and then I'm trying to be real smooth. I'm trying to just swim him up and out of the grass with a smooth raise of the rod tip. And I still feel there's some weight, so I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a tug. And I'm trying to punch through that grass. And whenever you get into an opening, you just let it fall back down. And so he just looks like he's popping out of the grass and then he's kind of falling back down. And as soon as you pop out of the right little piece of grass where a bass is hanging out ready to ambush, he's gonna fall right in front of him, kicking that tail. Bass is gonna go in for the kill and that is when you set the hook. Fishing this really just like you would a, I guess a jig or a Texas rig. You know, I'm just trying to maintain bottom contact with a large sweep though. With a Texas rig, sometimes you might pop it along the bottom. This is less popping and more uh, at the moment. What's attracting the bites at this very moment seems to be just a little sweep where he kind of like just swims up and then falls back down. Swims up and through grass, falls back down. So a couple key pointers for me on how I'm fishing this uh, mission fish bait tonight. There we go. There's another one. There we go. That's that's a good one. That's one we're looking for. Mission fish, baby. Doubled up with torrents. All right. There we go. Now we're starting to attract some quality right at sunset. Are you hooked pretty good? You look to be hooked okay. Not the best. Yeah, I know. Let me just kind of flick you up in here. 
All right, that's two for two on the last couple uh, bites. Ow, you've got some teeth. On the mission fish yet again. That was quick, man, almost back to back. Thank you, sir. What a day. I mean, we are catching them. See you, bud. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Alright guys, we are wrapping up right as sun is setting, man. They weren't hitting the top water. It's okay. Barely any room left on the SD cards. We have been filming all day once again, man. We filmed four videos today for you guys. And uh, this is what's left. We got to organize some stuff. We're taking a few minutes to put soft plastics back in their assorted bags. Uh, put the swim baits back. Terminal tackle up. Make sure the kayaks are clean and clear. We beat them up today, man. Probably need to take them through a little spray down car wash and uh, get them cleaned up. Camera gear is laying out. We're just trying to get everything organized once again, you guys. But I do want to thank you so much, Devin Torrance, for sticking around with us till the end on this video. The baits that were absolutely getting munched were the mission fish towards the end, the chatter bait absolutely wreaking havoc, and then the Biospawn XO ribbon 10 inch in that black and red. I think it was called the red shad color. That thing absolutely crushes summertime, just either creeping it or working it on the bottom. And when I say creeping it, I mean moving it or bouncing it off the bottom, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in on this one, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow. <gasps>